Laroon, founder of Laroon, the founder of the Fantasy Grounds Academy. And before we go into anything else, I'd just like, uh, Laroon, if you would like to address the audience before I get into our introducing our guests and the rules of the symposium. Yep. Go ahead, Aaron. So, hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, thanks, guests, and Greg, for putting all this together. This is probably, what, our third one, and we've had a lot of fun with these. Very successful. I know we've had a lot of good um, feedback and also uh, are able to get some bundles on the Instagram store. So later on after the show, if you guys want to check it out. Um, anyhow, I'll quit rambling and uh, just have fun. And I'm just going to do the technical side of things. So take it away, Greg. All right. So uh, with us, we have uh, Martin Doherty. Uh, I wanted to say of Mongoose Publishing, but he's a freelance author. Um, and I have, I have a, quite the bio on you from your website. I, I just want to say, reading up this week, uh, I'm, I, think, I think Renaissance Man is a good word. Uh, you are a, uh, a martial artist, a uh, prolific author of historic nonfiction, um, a traveler author uh, for both Mongoose, and I, I've got some previous editions. Uh, it looks like GURPS when I was going through the Traveler Wiki, trying to pull together all of your, your biography. Um, I'm going to share some good Goodreads links that, that I think captured everything and the Traveler Wiki link that captured everything. Um, but Martin, welcome. Thank you. Um, go Thank ahead. You. If you, yeah. And then Anthony, Tony, we got a page 121. Um, I want to say podcast. This, this vodcast is probably the right word, right? I'm a guy on YouTube. Yeah. You, yep. Uh, you were actually, you don't know this. But when I was soliciting to the faculty here at the Academy on, on guests this year, um, a couple of our faculty members really advocated for page 121. Oh, right. So I it. now, it, yeah. So it's, so it's exciting to have you. Uh, you do a lot of traveler reviews, not just Mongoose, but previous editions going back to GDW days uh, and other rule sets. Um, I know you're always in my, in my cycle when I'm streaming on YouTube. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thanks. Good to be here. So for the audience, uh, today is a one-hour symposium Q&A. I have provided some pre-generated questions as the moderator to our guests, and that'll probably get us through about 30 minutes. At 30 minutes, I'll cut us off, and we're going to go to an open Q&A format. Uh, and until we go open Q&A, all mics will be muted except for myself and our guests. Um, I'm going to be alternating the pre-generated questions with, with, our, with our guests, and then... Um, you could ask follow-on questions in text, whether you're on Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube, or here in Discord, and we're going to follow and we'll articulate what you're asking, uh, the text that you send us. Uh, mics will open for our Discord guests at the very end, though. We'll, we'll just make it open and, and call on everybody. Uh, and then I'm got, I got a caveat because it's the world we live in. If you have any OGL questions, we'll hold them until the end if we have time. And we probably won't have time. I'll just leave it at that. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we're just going to jump in it. Is the stream looking good, Laroon, on, on everything? I'm seeing Twitch looks great. YouTube looks great. Yep. Look All right, great. So uh, I just want to thank you both for your, being so gracious with your time and coming with us on a Saturday. Uh, it's it's already early afternoon in the, in the the UK. Martin's at and early morning here uh, in the North America, where the rest of us are at. Um, so just want to just thank you guys so much for coming coming in on a Saturday and doing this, so we can make this a global coverage kind of an event. Cool. Glad to be here. So we'll get into it. I don't want to go over on our hour, so I'm going to start with Martin. Uh, and it just this is a softball. Right, and tossing it up there. So tell, tell us everybody a little bit about your gaming history, and then I'm gonna already I'm gonna say I'm gonna ask you about your your martial arts too, because that was really. Um, I I started gaming in 1983. Um, my parents bought my sister the D and D basic set. They'd heard about it on the radio. This was just before the Satanic Panic, so they were saying good things about it at this point. Thought it would be good. Um, Travel was my second RPG. RuneQuest was my third. Um, as I, um, I don't think I've played D and D since the end of the the eighties. But the other two, I stayed very interested in. And I was always a big fan of Morrow Project, which I thought was way ahead of its time in terms of scenario design, because it was sandbox. 
here's the situation, here's what the people are doing, drop the players in, get on with it. And that was way ahead of its time. Um, and I've, I've consistently played those games and a few others ever since. Great. Thank you. And then as a follow-up, this might take a little bit longer. Tell us a bit. Uh, I know, I think it was the... Wasn't jujitsu where you started with with martial arts? It was. I started with judo, judo um, that was it. in the mid eighties, and I took up fencing in nineteen eighty seven, um, and been involved ever since. Um, they I, I progressed through jujitsu and some other things for a lot of years. Um, I'm not living in that world anymore, but I went very far down the rabbit hole. Um, we were teaching top end self defense to bodyguards at one point. Um, the fencing I've always stayed involved in, and these days I'm president of the British Federation for Historical Sword Play. Um, so basically, we play sword fights and we take it far too seriously. Awesome, and that and that kind of that led you into doing um, historical nonfiction, right? A little bit is that where that how that took mm. you down that path, or no? It just complemented it. I've always had an interest, and somewhere along the line. Um, well, I sent a CV to a, to a publishing company and said, um, do you have any work for me? And they gave me a book to do. Um, and the past 20 years I've written for them. Um, right place, right time, I guess. And every time you write a book, you learn more. And next time something comes up, well, it's a new learning experience every time. Okay, great, thank you. Tony, let's, let's hear a little bit about your, your background. Uh, Gaming history. I started D&D April 20th, 1980. I remember the date. Uh, DM the first day I uh, heard about the game. A buddy of mine got me into it. And I've uh, been DMing since. Uh, my campaign is 42 years old, almost 43. And my Greyhawk campaign's uh, over 40. Uh, we play about once a week. Uh, next game after D&D was Gamma World oh, and then nice. Traveler. So, yeah, uh, and then Champions, another game that, that we still play and, and enjoy. I've been thinking of getting in a Mutant Crawl Classics just to bring back the Gamma World uh, yep. gaming experience with a modern rule set. I miss, I miss some Gamma World. Gamma World 4th still holds up pretty well. How's it? Was that one, was that, was that based on the third edition? No, Did the fourth edition out? was in the early 90s. Okay. Uh, it was the one after the... D100 games from uh, TSR. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's much better. Okay, yeah, I know we played first and second. That's what my friends had. Okay. Yeah, I started Traveler, of course, with Classic. I started that in uh, March of 81, and uh, I played almost every version of Traveler at some point or another. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time. Well, that's actually, that's, you bring up something that's going to bring an interesting segue to what I'm about to ask Martin, but I'm going to give you a little bit of my personal. I started playing in the early 90s, uh, but I was aware of Traveler, and I never played it until the pandemic started. It was only because it was a licensed product on Fantasy Grounds that I even, you know what, I'll just check this out. I've always wanted to try it, and now it's my favorite rule set. I, I, we have a Pirates of Genetics campaign that's been going for over a year now, and... Uh, that was with a group that we, you know, started two, three years ago, just running the marches uh, adventures and the the reach adventures, and then all right, time for the big box. Let's get into it. So, but that that actually uh, that segue is going to bring me back to Martin. So, how did you get into to publishing for Traveler? I know it didn't start with Mongoose, based on what I've found on you. Um, I my, my very first published material was in 1984. Mm -hmm. um, it was the golden age of the stapled photocopied fanzine. And it was a RuneQuest magazine uh, called Mindless Slaughter. That was the thing at the time. You gave your magazine a silly name. And so I'd sort of always written for stuff, and it never occurred to me that there was anything weird about that. So somewhere along the line, um, I'd been... Ah, it was RuneQuest stuff in, initially. Uh, and then I approached GDW when um, Traveling New Era. No, no, that's not right. No, because I was already writing for, um, we did some work for Bits in the late 90s. Um, I was talking to Mark Miller about some stuff when, 
no, sorry, I'm getting this around the wrong way. Yes, I started with GDW. I pitched them a novel, some short stories and so forth, and they accepted the novel and then went under the next week. So that's my fault. And um, then discussions continued, and um, I did some work for Imperium Games. Um, there are stories there. And um, sort of continued talking to Mark Miller about stuff, and then Gerb's Traveller came up, and it was sort of logical that we would write for it. So we just sort of did. And looking back, I honestly can't remember the details. We just one day had a contract to write this book, and it seemed normal. Um, it was a very long time ago now. I'm, I'm sure there was some process, but yeah, I don't really remember much more than saying I could do that book for you. What, and then, so then t- time goes on, and, and now Mongoose is one of the licensees of Far Future Enterprises for Traveler, and you, you find yourself writing yeah. for Mongoose. How did that come about? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I... Uh, I can remember talking to Matthew at Gen Con UK 2004 uh, mm-hmm. when it rained so much the floor floated away. Um, that wasn't my fault. And um, we were talking about stuff, and he told me then, he said, I want to get the license for Traveller because I know what to do with it. Um, and at that time, the situation was in flux. Not long after that, would be 2006, I think Mongo's got the license. And again, it was just sort of logical I would work on this because I'd worked on the previous three or four editions. So um, I, I, you get yourself a travel license and I'll one day just turn up um, and nobody will be able to remember how I got there or why, but it just seems to just sort of happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when Matthew had in mind getting the license he was talking to me it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that sooner or later i'd, I'd be working for them and here mm-hmm. we are nice that's awesome we're uh as a fan i'm really glad matt you got you because just like tony said i'm a big fan of uh a lot of the adventures i've run have come from you um yep. nope. you are credited in a lot of the content i use i i could say for sure because i started looking into it you know you, you started off, I think, just doing adventures. Was that, was that would that be correct? I know I got you as um, some of the earlier stuff for second edition. Anyway, was the uh, Traveler Companion credited there? Um, but a yeah. lot of the, a lot of the early adventures. Yeah, I did quite a bit of the early first edition product line, and then I was away doing other things um, because I'm a freelancer and I do other things, um, and. Um, when second edition came about, I think that coincided with me coming to the end of something I was doing elsewhere. Um, so I sort of came back and ended up doing a lot more for second edition because towards the, the latter part of first edition, I think I was doing a lot of work elsewhere. So there's a lot of stuff that's not credited to me. Mm-hmm. But you, in the last year, it's been pretty prolific. You were mercenaries, of, right? That was the big Kickstarter, and I got it. Uh, I think I got over my shoulder. What am I thinking of the show? And then I even opened up my um, my core twenty twenty two update. Uh, you are you are credited as Inner Circle. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, um, it, there is a sort of mythical inner circle of people who Mark Miller talks to about his ideas and stuff. And sometimes I'm credited as being part of it. Um, um, but, that sometimes things happen that I know nothing about. It, it just depends who he's talking to at any given time. But yes, there are certain people who um, Mark runs ideas by or who have been very influential. And um one point, I was pretty sure I was the only person who was known by their initials on that list. Everybody else had a real name, but I had a code name. Okay, awesome. All right, Tony, we're, we're going to swing to you now. Okay. So uh, kind of in the same vein, but how did you find yourself creating, being a YouTube creator? Well, it, it came out of COVID, actually. I, I had COVID very bad in March of 20, and I was left with some uh, permanent lung damage. Oh. And I found myself with time on my hands and a massive collection of role-playing stuff. So I thought, well, let's figure out a way to use this stuff productively other than just playing. And uh, that's when I got the idea to start the YouTube channel. Uh, I did a couple of test videos that the world will never see. And then, uh, and uh, I think it was uh, October of 2020 is is when I went live with page 121. 
and uh, I've been going strong since. So page one twenty one isn't just exclusive to Traveler. It's uh, it's, no. it's whatever your passions are for tabletop role playing. Is that would yes. that be accurate? What what, yeah. what what kind of stuff do you cover? And then are you? I know the answer, but right. uh, to what which editions of Traveler do you like to focus on? Do you have a, a favorite? Actually, I'll cover all editions of of Traveler. Yeah. Uh, I have them from the little black books all the way through current. Uh, I love Mongoose Traveler second. I think it's a an, very complete rule set. I really enjoy running it. Uh, and I love being part of the Traveler Renaissance, as I've called it. Just this era of uh, fanzines popping up everywhere. And I'm not going to get into the OGL, but I've enjoyed that That a lot of that has, has felt a lot like the early 80s with the staple magazines Martin was talking about. Uh, it was just a, it's, it was a fun time in the 80s to walk into the store and see some travel license product that you hadn't even heard about and suddenly it was on the shelf. And uh, it feels like that again. There's such a, a wide breadth of, of things to go into a traveler and you can venture anywhere in the traveler universe that you care to or some other alternate universe, the traveler companion gives us that. So uh, it, it's, it's a good time to be a traveler. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm, I like the, from first edition to second edition, there was a big effort to get into a new artwork direction, uh, getting out of the, the traditional black and white wine art, which I nostalgic for sure. I, I enjoy it looking at it, but to bring in this new audience and, and capture new players. And then now with the new core updates, um, the, the graphics team over at Mongoose has just been fantastic on updating the art. Yeah, it's Traveler's just, it's beautiful to look at, as well as to read. Yeah, no, it's it's great. And if, I'm speaking as a, both a Traveler fan and a Fantasy Grounds fan. We play visually on a computer just to have that, you know, that fantastic art in a very well-developed uh, theme for Fantasy Grounds. It just, it looks great, and it's really nice to play. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep it keep it on you, Tony, because I told you I would when I sent you the the read ahead on these oh, questions. Yeah, so what 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 have been your highs and lows then of of getting into being a YouTube creator? Uh, the highs have been interacting with with people that watch my videos and and things like this, uh, and I just enjoyed kind of broadening the community a little bit. I think uh, the lows have been when I think a, a, a topic is just going to be absolute slayer and it's it's going to do really good and. It barely ekes out any views. And I scratch my head going, oh, wait a minute, that was a good topic. And, and I didn't stumble through the whole video. How come nobody's watching it? And I have not figured out that algorithm yet. <laughs> yeah. So it's trial and error. You got to come up with those real, uh, those headlines that are clickbait. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I won't do that. So I guess I'm going to stay forever doomed to just squeak <laughs> by. Um, yeah, the OGL, I was asked uh, by a number of people for my opinion on that. My opinion was, I have no opinion. I'm not informed enough. I can't give one. Yeah. All right, we're, we're coming up 20 minutes in. I, I still have at least one more round of prepared questions before we'll open it up to the audience. Um, I don't see, start getting questions in on Twitch and YouTube on Facebook. We haven't had any chat coming in. Let's start prepping it and I'll, I'll articulate it for you. I'll verbalize your questions there. So Martin, coming back to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Mongoose has been releasing uh, Traveler 2 products at a very, I say, torrid pace. It's been unbelievable in the last few years how much stuff is coming out. Kickstarters are booming, as I alluded to. They're, uh, they're getting blown out of the water there. Anything exciting right now that you're working on that you could share? <laughs> I'm actually not, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say and what I'm not at this point, because I should have really asked Matthew, uh, but, you know, I didn't, um, because I'm not. I'm not organized. Um, so right now I'm, I'm writing the third part of the three campaign, mega campaign or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm writing uh, Wrath of the Ancients, uh, which is a sequel to Mysteries and Secrets. A uh, bit of a departure for me because I normally write very, very low, as we know, um, five guys in a spaceship, sort of aliens level of stuff. And this is a lot more um, characters who, who potentially can change the cosmos. Um, so it's a, a slightly different style, um, and that that's a departure for me, which I'm finding quite interesting. I'm telling quite a big story here, 
um when i finish that um i've just agreed i've actually already started it but we've actually agreed that i will um a, a book about the expeditions beyond the um to the perseus arm so beyond our sp spiral arm mm -hmm. uh which is the book i've wanted to write for 25 years um so i'm quite excited about that even if nobody else is uh, we may have a one of those head scratching moments like, why did nobody else care about this but i'm excited um and then after that we've been talking about doing the fifth frontier war all of it uh, and that is huge that is an absolutely huge subject um in the real world i worked um in the defense industry for a while and i was an, uh, an analyst um and so i actually know how naval warfare works um and i have to translate that to a coherent narrative for the fifth frontier war and all the little details and um it's huge it's absolutely huge so we have a, a conference coming up between me matthew and mark about what exactly we're going to do um and i'm hoping the big idea is survive contact because this one's big um it, it's the biggest story i think we've told so far so looking forward to doing that do you think on top of being a source book and in adventures that there's going to be new rules introduced then maybe like uh for fleet engagements um god i hope not because i'll have to write them. <laughs> um, um i'm thinking in terms of doing something like what we did with mercenary with the large-scale battle simulation system yeah. um whereby you can sort of abstract most of the fleet engagement but zoom in on the bit you're interested in mm -hmm. um we'll probably end up doing something like that which will complete my descent into madness um because that stuff's hard yeah yeah yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, especially with three-dimensional space you're not doing it on a on a 2d uh, ocean yeah, yeah, just keep tormenting me with these things. Yes, I'm trying yeah. not to think about this right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a big one, um, and it'll have to be done. Um, but we'll get there. Um, when I did it for Mercenary, it turned out to be much less straightforward than I thought. So this one's, yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, we get to, we get to go on this, the topic of space battle and, and game mechanics for that'd be its own podcast, I think. But we'll move on. We'll, we'll, so I don't make you, uh, I don't trigger the crazy button on your side. I got a lot of those. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Tony, coming down my question list on you. Um, what what? Just talking traveler and any addition to traveler. Uh, what what do you like most about the rule set? Either the setting, the game mechanics. You could take tidbits out of different publishers and put them all together. What would you want to see as a a source compendium, et cetera? It's it's the setting itself that that keeps me in Traveler. I am big science fiction fan. Have been since I was small. Uh, absolutely love the cohesive Traveler universe. The official Traveler universe. I think it's very well done. Um, that being said, I'm not above just trashing something I don't care for and putting in my own thing, which I think any good game master does. Uh, but it, and I like the, the portability from edition to edition. Even GURPS, which is a relatively alien, pun intended, uh, set of rules compared to Mongoose Second, you can still go into the GURPS stuff and, and read this stuff and then just bring it into Mongoose Second without any problem whatsoever. And I, I do that all the time about mark miller's traveler from the the mid 90s a uh, great source of history and if i want to look up something here or there i just i go ahead and I, I pull those down there were issues with that that run i won't go into but I, we all know that there were some problems with that the stories uh-huh but um uh, beyond that the the actual history out of that stuff is fun and then the future history martin's written for the 1248 universe uh, that's coming up on my channel soon. Uh, I enjoy that stuff. Uh, now, one question to do for Martin is, is 1248, quote, canon, unquote? I don't know. Okay. The truth of the matter is, um, it says on the wiki that it's canon, and it was canon at the time. It was agreed yep. as canon. Um, however, I don't see how it can be reconciled with 
um, what's now canon regarding Agent of the Imperium. I did ask Mark about this. I've never had a, an answer. I, I got an answer from one of the other Inner Circle people that came down to, um, I'm glad you're not making a fuss about this, which is <laughs> cryptic. Um, so at this point, we don't know. Uh, and that is something, there is. There are rumours of an Empress Wave source book sometime in the future, so that will get resolved. But okay. right now, um, there is a question mark, and I'm not sure anybody's decided what the answer is. Um, because, the, you know, obviously Mark can retcon anything. We don't know whether that was his intention or whether um, there's some other explanation that'll come out in time. Um, but that one's above my pay grade. I actually don't know what's happening there. Okay. All right, well, me for and when they start paying me to write that i'll give you an answer okay that's fair no <laughs> uh, we're nearing the 30 minute mark we got questions coming in i'm going to hold them until i get i'm going to ask one for martin and then i got two of the prepared questions for both of you i'll, I'll save them to the end on what what you personally what personal projects you're working on so we could give a nice outro promotion personal promotion so uh i, I didn't think to ask this martin but what about what are your favorite tidbits from all the editions i you, yeah, I mean, you get to talk with all the, you know, Mark Miller, the the father of Traveler, and uh, I think you were credited in a GURPS that I found somewhere. And yeah, yeah, I I did the well, with my uh, with Neil Fryer. I did the first two GURPS books, also the third one, but it was never published um, uh, because things happened and something you, directions were changed, and we submitted the manuscript, but it was never published. Um, it eventually became the Grand Fleet source book. Um, but at that point, the, the other GURPS people started writing for it, and I moved away to do other things. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite things? Um, I'm, I'm oddly fond of the Reft Sector uh, source book um, for some reason. Um, I think that's one of the best things I've written. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly why, other than when I finished it, I read it back and thought, well, this is really good. Um, what else? Um, we have reached the point where I've actually forgotten some stuff. I have I have literally quite recently read the synopsis for, it was actually The Order of Prometheus, which will be coming out quite soon. I read the synopsis for it on the Mongoose page and thought, well, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I wrote that. <laughs> um, we have actually got to the point where it's it's fading into a blur. Um, one of the things I did like was doing the the Soleimani books because the Soleimani have been treated as almost cartoony bad guys. A society like that, the way it's presented in the early materials, couldn't actually exist. It just couldn't work. And so I had to sort of find a way that it does work. And what I was able to do was explore the psyche of people who think they're better than you. Um, and I discovered some very interesting things about them. They're basically snobs. They're not haters. They're snobs. Just like the imperial nobility are better than you because they've got all that money in the family and all the rest of it. Every Soleimani thinks they're better than you because they were born a pure blood, pure, pure blood Soleimani. It's like, they're a bit racist. But then the imperial wealthy people are a bit wealthiest. And, no, and it turns out nobody's particularly right here. And it was a very interesting sort of um, exploration of how societies work and what what is acceptable in one place is not acceptable somewhere else. Uh, and I, I rather enjoyed that um, as a sort of an exploration of how other people think. Yeah, yeah. I got to get. I don't have any of the uh, Solomon content. I have to admit, I got to. It's on my reading list. There's so much backlog because I got into <laughs> Traveler so late. <laughs> it's it's overwhelming. <laughs> It's a good problem yeah. to have. Oh yeah, it's only oh, me. Yeah. Well, had, for the last three years, it's been it's been a fantastic. Uh, I'm like, where's this been all my life? You know. It was reading record last time, by the way, Martin. Yeah, unfortunately, my wife didn't hear that. She's somewhere. All right, we got we got some some questions coming in through chat. Um, we're gonna open up uh, mics. I'm gonna read this first one from from Zerker. Uh, so this is a question for Martin. Uh, regarding the possible advancement of the Traveler timeline, the Fifth Frontier War Rebellion virus, uh, Matt, Mongoose Matt, made some comment that there would be there would be a ringed fence or something to that effect, uh, so that referees could ignore them if they wanted to continue in the Golden Age campaign. 
What was your understanding of this? Is it just a branding exercise to distinguish those timelines from a standard, et cetera? My, this is purely my impression as a, as a freelancer. Um, mm -hmm. There are certain distinct periods and the sort of 1105, 11 to seven golden age, you could play there forever. Um, if you want to advance the timeline to, to 1116 and start into the hard times stuff, you can do that. But they're almost like separate settings. Yep. Um, the setting is so different in the Shattered Imperium to uh, in the Golden Age that you might as well be, well, you're obviously playing the same rule set, but you might as well be playing in a different universe. Um, so, yes, I think there's there's room for them all to be segregated and to support all of them because some of us, you know, some of us want to play in one one setting, some of us want to play in another. Um, I don't know what the big plan is. Um, I will find out round about the time, well, probably about a year before everybody else does, because I'll have to write it. But I basically, I find out when I get my brief to write stuff. Um, but my take on it would be that even if we start looking at post Fifth Frontier War, you'll obviously still be able to play um, in 11 or 5. You always will. And there are people who are still playing in that era from when Classic came out. And that that won't change. Yep. yep. All right. Next All right. one. This one. This one. I got one for Tony, and then another one for Martin. They're coming in. Uh, for Tony, how do you see the offerings growing with respect to Traveler as you continue to build your following, your your uh, your base okay. there? Any thoughts on about how you you might monetize that? Well, I I guess I'm monetizing it. It's it's pennies on the dollar, I guess. Uh, but. Right now, right now, it's it's an exercise of, of taking a look at my my collection and and just bringing out some stuff I think people would be interested in seeing. Um, I have a few series that are going right now: travel campaign tips. Uh, in fact, the next one of those drops Monday. Uh, just things that I've learned running Traveler, and it's just little tidbits to pass along. And then I'm just going to start up a couple of I'm doing do it a history history of the Traveler universe. Um, just do a series of videos on that. And then I'm going to take a look at uh, personalities of the travel universe where I'll go back and I'll take a look at Cleon the first and other important notables throughout history. And it, in that I'm going to be including the rebellion. Uh, we're going to be talking about Lucan and things like that. So, and I played straight through the new era uh, in the nineties. I, I played it straight through and I brought my campaign into each new setting as it went and uh, when the Lauren verse came around in, in 1998 with GURPS, I jumped on that pack wagon too because by then I was ready to go back to classic. Um, but as far as my channel is concerned, it's going to continue to stay very wide ranging. Uh, all things Traveler, that uh, as long as people show an interest. I'm always interested in new topics and new ideas. I encourage it in almost every video. So if anybody's got ideas out there, you know, throw them to me and uh, I'll I take a look at it. Um, a historical tidbit that nobody else in the world knows. Okay. Except for the people who figured it out. When we did the um, Gateway Domain setting uh, in 998, it was just after the abdication of Emperor Styrix. Okay. There's a character called Prince Garland. Now, this was never revealed, and I've never told anybody this, but Prince Garland is actually Emperor Styrix in disguise. Uh, he took the identity of a, a very ill cousin and he's wandering around observing the universe and reporting back to the throne. And there was to be a storyline about the former Emperor Styrix. We never got to write it. But when you want to write Styrix up, I'll provide you with the uh, the storyline that we would have I done. I will take you up on that. that. Yes, that's excellent. That's the exact kind of thing I'm looking for. You heard it here first. Outstanding. Uh, yeah, Traveler Obscura too. who the old timer is in Starship Operator's Manual. Uh, who the woman in black on the cover of the new era book is. Those are big oh. mysteries that lurk for years. And I finally know the answer to both of those. And it took a lot of time. But uh, pre-internet especially, it was hard to get the answers to that stuff. Um, I have, I have a, a still, I think, got the transcript of a conversation I had with Dave Nilsson about a lot of this stuff. Oh, okay. um, and it just raised more questions than answers. <laughs> I just it's some fun stuff to dig into to to really get into the nuggets of Traveler. And yeah. uh, like I said, I, I was one of the few that was obsessing over who the woman with the staff was on the new era cover. And then to find out, I believe it was in twelve forty eight 
was uh, where it was finally revealed who she is. And that, that'll be one of the topics I'm going to be doing down the line. Uh, yeah. It's just, just a lot of fun. <laughs> well, if you want any information, get in touch with me, um, and I'll tell you what I can remember. Um, I, will, I will do I, that. No. And I, I, I'm definitely going to hit you up for some info on Emperor Styrix. <laughs> Yeah, we had a whole story about him that was unfortunately never told. Okay. Excellent. That's pretty exciting. I'll, I'll, uh, you want me to, after this, I give you guys each other's emails. Would that work for you both? That'd be great. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, same, same coming from Pete. Uh, he had a, a question for Martin then. Uh, he asks, uh, are you familiar with the U.S. Operation Wash Tub? Uh, stay behind agents and cash, cash, caches in Alaska in the 50s in anticipation of the Soviet invasion? And then do you feel that there could be a place for this kind of advantage in the 5FW? Yes. Um, I mean, stay behind is is well, well documented. During the Second World War, the Home Guard um, had specialist units whose job was to, to stay behind in hides and when the Nazi invaders passed by, they would come out and cause havoc. Um, it, it's fairly common pretty much everywhere. There's a reference to it as, as a Project Phoenix in the Soleimani Rim invasion. So, yeah, it makes it makes sense that um, preparations would have been made that way. Um, and um, now that you've mentioned it, that might turn up in the Fifth Frontier War book as... Um, uh, as a plot line. In fact, I'm already having an idea. Thank you for that. <laughs> Excellent. Great. Great. I got I got some more coming through. Um, we'll, we could open up mics after I asked uh, DM Celebrindle's question, and then we'll open up mics for those that are here in Discord. All right, so you mentioned it. Uh, I'm not sure who this is for, so I'm just going to read it because I haven't re read ahead. But you mentioned that the space battles will challenge... Oh, this is for Martin. You mentioned that the space battles will be a challenge to implement. And of course, the scary discussion of 3D came up. Have you considered to simply implement it in 2D? Uh, there are lots of tabletop space games uh, that suspend the 3D aspect, and they work quite fine. Renegade Legion and Star Trek come to mind. Um, that wasn't what I meant. Um, what you're talking there is resolving starship combat, which would be relatively small scale. I'm talking about extra, uh, um, abstracting a fleet action lasting a month. Um, or, or perhaps a shorter action or whatever, and subsidiary actions, and then being able to zoom in on it. Um, so it would be an abstract system for, um, you know, the, the, the 99th Battle Fleet makes an attempt to break through here. How did that go? Uh, and then it gradually zooms down to, and you are the captain of this destroyer in the middle of all of this, and we've resolved the battle in an abstract manner, so we kind of know generally how it's going to come out, but now your actions might change that. So I'm trying to find a way, which I did with Mercenary, and it, it worked okay, but this is even bigger. I'm trying to find a way to to move from the referee being able to abstract quite a big situation without knowing ahead of time and just deciding, oh, yes, there's Odani win, um, and then allow that to feed into player actions and player actions to feed into the resolution of the battles. And that way lies madness. <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward to doing that. But as for resolving space battles, yes, travel has always done it in two D. Uh, I'm not going to mess with that. that is, it's traditional, you know, and it's also much less thinking. Because if you haven't got a computer to model it, it becomes a problem, particularly the orbital mechanics bit. Yep. All right. At this time, I got nothing in text. So, if anybody here in Discord that wants to go off mute and and ask out loud, and engage with our guest, Lion, I just saw you go open. Go ahead. I saw that. Hi, Martin. This is Lester Hendricks. Um, I just want to say my, one of my favorite settings is the gateway domain. Um, the, I, I, I found that just recently, and I've been playing since the 80s, so I wish I found it a lot sooner. Um, I, I thought that Matt had mentioned, or Matthew had mentioned, they were going to redo that, that it was in the works in the annual report or the annual state of the uh, mongoose. Can you, do you know anything about that? Because you didn't mention it in your list of projects, and I was wondering if maybe you're doing that or somebody else is doing that, or maybe it's just far, far future. I have good news for you. Yes. Um, I have written um, the Trailing Frontier 
which is gateway sector and lay sector complete source books for them it's done it's written it's in the editing process right now so yes that's happening i have two um 96 page campaign adventures planned i just got to get matthew to pay me to write them um and there's so many other things in the list i don't know when that'll happen but i've got some ideas one of the adventures deals with sort of the um the left hand end of gateway sector sort of imperials moving out into the area there and what the differences they'll find there. the other end of that is at the other end of the sector um i want to revisit the lords of thunder adventure mm-hmm. from mega traveler journal four yes um and i'm i if you look at the mercenary pack all three of the mercenary adventures that come with it are in gateway sector i don't have that yet but i think it's in the mail this was deliberate on my part because i wanted to open up that sector i wanted to be writing there so I put those adventures there uh, because what a great place to do mercenary adventures. You've got the Lords of Thunder right on your doorstep. You've got all the politics going on. It's a great setting. Thinking about it, probably my favourite um, traveller setting. So, yeah, I'm really keen to do it. And the, the source book's already done. As for the adventures, um, if we all clamour loud enough, Matt will let us do it. The Crucius Margin will get rewritten because that's actually the old Judges Guild sector data that got ported through to the quick link version yeah um i don't i do know it's been altered um by the people who do travel a map um are very peripherally associated with them um mm. so i don't know quite what they're doing i know they've added some polities and they've changed some of the some of the order data um we sort of redid it a bit when we did the quick link version so that's sort of I would say oh, it's the pseudo canon version, but looking at what's happening on Traveler Map, um, it will have changed a bit. Um, we haven't got into that yet. Uh, I don't know when we'll be developing that, but we seem to be developing every other sector. So we'll get there sooner or later. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Great questions. Martin, I saw you almost do a backflip. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about right. that. Um, that that I'd actually forgotten. I guess one it's one of the ones I've done, but I've forgotten. But actually, that I've been pushing for years to do to do this because yeah. it's outside the Imperium and it's open, and there's more opportunities to just for characters just to do stuff. Um, yeah, okay, I'm excited. Yeah, I think Tony was too. I saw his I saw yeah. his reaction. Uh, one of my first travel campaigns was in Gateway uh, uh, with the old uh, Judges Guild. I, yeah. I had that set. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. love the Lords of Thunder. Yeah, um, I, I've I've done the Kikri as part of a source book, um, and again, thinking like other people do. Um, they, you know, we had to do with the Solomani, we had to do with the Kikri. Very alien mindset, uh, very very alien mindset. Um, and one of my favourite bits of the Kikri book was the term "one with the sky," which is a Kikri who's gone mad and thinks he lives amongst a herd of his ancestors and he's a sort of crazy holy kakri who wanders around preaching and he oh he's one with the sky <laughs> yeah i like that phrase yes I, i've known read, a few people have you read a, ever read from traveler's digest i think it was 17 or 18 it's a nice little piece of short fiction by i think it's william h keith dealing with kakri who are in uh cryogenic suspension aboard a ship who wake up early <laughs> No, it, I haven't seen that one. It's it's a very good. It's about six or seven pages out of uh, Traveler's Digest. That uh, for me, it set the mindset for Kukri beautifully for me. How they're they're dealing with their relative isolation. There's only six of them there, and they're enclosed. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, that's not a good. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really good story. I'll have to look for that. All right. Uh, All right. Thank you. I think. Papa Burgundy, did you open your mic? Did you have a question? Maybe we just missed you were open. Yeah, no, I just, uh, I am 100% a newbie referee. I literally just got the core and the companion for Christmas for my wife. I just need a recommendation on, I fell in love with the system, reading it in the background so far. I just, for as a new referee, what are your recommendations for how big should my party be to start? So I'm not overwhelmed with the rules and then trying to teach my guys at the table and also a starting scenario. 
I've always favoured about four players, so three to five. Any more than that, and you've got people, I'm going to date myself here, chattering on about what happened on Xena Warrior Princess last night, and then sort of saying, oh, well, well what do you mean? That's not fair. I, you know, Why aren't we getting to do anything? Because you were talking. Um, too many people just doesn't work, particularly for a new referee. Um, two or three players would be fine. As an adventure, um, I think Flatland is a good place to start because you've got nothing. You haven't even got any shoes. Um, you're walking up out of cryogenic suspension, oddly enough, um, in a ship that's sinking in a lake. And really, your, your challenges are quite small but pressing, as in don't die, get some shoes, get out of the, the ship, find out where you are and why you're there, um, and then try and get to safety, at which point your problems start. So it's a relatively self-contained adventure. Um, I, I find that useful. Um, oh, what's it called? High and Dry um, is, is dry, yep. because you get a ship out of it. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't try and do anything big. I would try and do something self-contained, particularly where the travellers are contained by the environment so that they can't suddenly say, oh, why don't we just jump halfway across the sector there and see if we can buy some novelty tea mugs? Because players will do that. Um, and stick some natural obstacles in the way so that you as the referee don't have to say, oh, no, you can't do that. Um, the world has said, no, you can't do that right now. And that allows you to keep them within sensible limits, at least until you've found your feet. And, and I would recommend uh, uh, session zero. Uh, sit down with your guys, develop the characters together. Uh, I didn't get to do that in my last uh, campaign, the one I just started up, and I really don't feel the characters as fleshed out as they would have been had my guys given me three hours to sit there and throw dice in front of me. Uh, so the next one we start up, I'm going to insist on a session zero. Keep it fun, keep it light, keep everybody engaged, but have them develop the characters with you. The characters will have a lot more life going into the story. And if I could, I, I, if I could get a shameless plug, because I didn't start playing Traveler till second edition, and this being fantasy grounds focused, uh, I did start with the um, high and dry. And that was that was perfect. Got the the players of their ship. Um, it's already converted in fantasy grounds. If that's going to be your flavor, otherwise it's it's um, it's a great two part adventure. Mission of Mithril was a nice follow up to. Those are available at, at mongoosepublishing.com. And I would also say probably four to five five max. Because my problem is if I get into a space combat, if I have six or seven players, I'm going to have two or three just, you know, one at a medic station for three hours, one one as a Marine waiting to see if they get boarded for three hours of space combat, and that's, mm -hmm. that's not fun. I mean, space combat should be fun. So if you, if you have a smaller crew, you get everybody engaged. I just ran high and dry for my, my sons. They yeah. enjoyed it quite a bit. I, I did a video on it a couple weeks ago. Oh, I got to check it out. Another question for both Tony and Martin. Um, what are your inspirations? Heinlein's my favorite author, uh, but movies, books, what, what what brought you into science fiction and keeps you going, and what do you like now? I'm a big I'm... fan of Niven, Larry Niven. Uh, Ringworld is just an outstanding book. Dune, another tremendous book. I'm dating myself, I know. Um, Heinlein is, is a lot of fun to read. Um, and then... Uh, Cosmic Computer. I'm drawing a blank in the gentleman's name. Oh, I can't think of it. Uh, no, maybe not. I can't yeah, remember. I can't, I can't look at my bookshelf. It's up there somewhere. Yeah. Cosmic okay, Computer okay. is by H. Beam Piper. Thank oh, you. Course. Thank course. you. Libra library. My apologies, Mr. Right. Piper. Yep. But uh, those were the ones I, that I was reading before I ever discovered Traveler. And then, of course, the original Star Trek series, and then Star Wars, which came out when Traveler came out. Uh, those were all big influences for me. The um, Star Wars sold me science fiction, I guess, uh, at which point I discovered that my mother had been reading science fiction since she was a kid. So I inherited all these terrible 1940s science fiction book with spy rays and um, tractor guns and all sorts of fantastic oh. stuff. absolute rubbish but some amazing stories um space viking by h Beam piper one of my favorite books it's also a very very traveler book 
Um, other than that, uh, I've got some Andre Norton books and and that sort of thing. Um, and I it was quite heavily influenced by um, well, things like Alien and Aliens sort of movies that are quite as again quite self-contained um bunch of fairly ordinary people in a in a desperate situation rather than the, the superheroes um I'm, I'm not a big fan of these heroes who can achieve anything um i'm more interested in some bloke with a spanner totally out of his depth um interests me so any any anything from that end of, of science fiction um I, i've i read the classics um foundation and um the, a lot of the Highland stuff and all the rest of it, uh, but I think what strikes that what struck me the, the chord was that the most was um, the stuff that's is quite self quite self contained. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the book. I've got it here somewhere. Um, Sargasso of Space, Andrew and Andre Norton, uh, broken down old tramp freighter. They buy the rights to a planet, and it turns out to be a bust, and they've somehow got to make some money on it. Oh, and it turns out to be a death trap as well. Um, that sort of thing, and you can probably spot that in some of the stuff I've I've been writing. Um, a bunch of blokes way out of their depth, just doing the best they can. Um, not a big fan of the giant star smashing epics. Okay, I got uh one more text question maybe, and then we'll take one more verbal, and I think that'll probably take us to an hour. Our hour. So uh, Zerker is asking to Martin. Um, Martin, are you involved in any plans to follow up on the starter set adventure um, that the um, that came in the box set? I think to, to Nath. Uh, um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, I didn't write the original. Um, I was given it to fix um, because it was incomplete and it 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 had some problems. Um, so I, I reworked it and um, I set up for this this campaign where the, the three great colony ships leave Tinath and voyage across space and um, find things and, and have adventures. And then it the focus moved elsewhere. Uh, and I don't know. Again, that's above my pay grade. Um, there is a lot in the projected product line. It's up to Matthew what gets written. So if he wants it writing, I'll write it. Um, I left it wide open for where I think it should go. Um, and I'll go there if somebody pays me to do it. If not, they'll pay me to do something else. I'm a hack. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, basically, I am a bloke with a spanner in a spaceship. Um, and I'm just trying to make a living. Um, I am living traveler. It's not glamorous. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Any any questions uh, in Discord? Anybody want to come off mute and, and ask before our time's up? We got five minutes. I'm checking uh, Twitch and Facebook and YouTube for anything. Laroon, do you see anything I missed? I'll try again. Um, do you guys have any plans to attend any conventions this year, Martin and or Tony? Yeah. Um, my attending stuff budget is relatively small uh, and I'm heavily involved in the historical fencing uh, world so I'm already at three events for that this year um, if compulsion runs in uh, in Edinburgh I might get to that but other than that probably not um, I'm already very heavily committed to one of the other areas I'm involved in I, I, I love about four hours uh, away from Indianapolis. So Gen Con is, is a hope of mine this year. But again, it's going to be a budgetary situation because I'd like to go down there for a couple of days if I could. Uh, but I'll have to see how that plays out. I'll be at Adepticon, which is only about an hour from my house. But that's more of a, a tabletop war, Warhammer kind of thing. Yeah, it's been a while since I made Adepticon. Miss those. All right, with five minutes left, I'm going to do some some plugs for for the fantasy grounds, and then we're going to have our guests, all all you guys, opportunity to anything you guys want to share on the way out. Um, but hurry up and get some of those last minute text questions in. We'll see if we can squeeze it in. 
Uh, I do want to say that uh, Fantasy Grounds has licensed uh, Mongoose Traveler uh, content uh, available on their web store. Currently, probably the only VTT that I'm aware of that has the licensed stuff. Doesn't mean you can't play on other virtual tabletops. Uh, we are we are pro uh, gaming as long as you know it's it's uh, it's fun. This is this is what we love is playing uh, TTRPGs and me personally, Traveler. Uh, I do want to point out um, that if you get involved in Fantasy Grounds, they do have free adventures. So last year, I believe it was the Dust Station uh, rehash that, that Mongoose released for free. That's also free on, on Fantasy Grounds. And then this year, Martin, you wrote, uh, what was it, Stranded? And that is also free uh, on oh. the Fantasy Grounds. Martin, did I misquote you? No, it, it's just that um, I, when I wrote it, the title was Downed. And so when you said stranded, I was thinking that sounds remarkably like that one that I wrote. But yeah, yeah. Um, the the title got changed. I forgot that. Yeah, it's based uh, on Marooned, the classic adventure. Oh, okay. Hence gotcha. stranded, bound, whatever. <laughs> awesome. Um, so the questions that I prepared that I said we're going to save to the end. I'll I'll start with Martin. Um, we we take us out as any projects outside of Traveler or you could say Traveler that we forgot to talk about that you would like to share. Uh, doesn't your anything going on in your life? Uh, yeah, you know everything. Um, I, I, I'm a, so I'm a freelancer. I work in a variety of different industries, and there's always things going on. Um, so there's probably more mythology books on the way, um, mm -hmm. and there may or may not be some more television stuff. Um, I actually turned down a TV appearance this week on account of they wanted me in a different city at 14 hours notice. Um, and this was just not doable. But there's, there might be more of that. We we don't know at this point. Um, but the big thing at the moment is um, the historical fencing world's opening back up after COVID. And we're having our first events. Um, so we're running an event called Dueling Weapons Symposium in a few weeks' time. Uh, which we're very excited about. It's the, the first event our group's run for about seven years. And, um, well, it, it's going to be really good, um, especially the bit that where I'm not organising it. Um, so I just get to turn up and be a superstar. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, there's a bunch of other historical fencing events happening, and hopefully we'll just start to see a sort of a reawakening and, and being able to just get out there and do stuff, uh, which will be a nice change. And, and Tony, kind of in the same vein, uh, we mentioned earlier you do more than just Mongoose Traveler. Uh, you, you cover other RPGs and and other topics. Anything you want to share that to let the, our community know that Page 121 does and anything in the pipeline coming out that you have planned? Now, the Page 121 is, is pretty much uh, fly by the seat of my pants. I, I'll think up topics a week or two in advance, do my research, and then, and then do them. So I'm always interested. I do find that the episodic stuff like the campaign tips and any kind of series they, they tend to do the best so i'm going to be exploring some more of those like i said earlier traveler history is going to be one of them Traveler personalities is going to be another um because these are some areas too that are, are kind of subtle and maybe a lot of folks might have read it but not digested it and that's kind of why i'm going to some of the more not obscure but lesser talked about things in traveler and um, I'll still keep doing across the uh, spectrum of Traveler. I've got over 40 years worth of stuff to draw from. And uh, I cover, you know, D&D, &D, first edition, uh, with a smattering of second and third, and a, and a handful of other games. I'm going to uh, be taking a look at Alternity, the uh, game from the late 90s from uh, TSR, and uh, uh, Space Opera, the actual Traveler knockoff from the early 80s. I'm going to take a look at both of those soon on my channel. Um, and then uh, Hobby Shop 1983 is coming. It's just a little retrospective week of stuff that was on the shelves when you walked in the hobby store in 1983. I had a lot of good feedback on Hobby Shop 82, so I'm doing it again. This year it'll be Hobby Shop 83. Awesome. And then in a month or two, I'm going to be doing probably another Traveler week. So Great. All right, and then Martin, where, where can fans and followers find you if they want to engage with you? Are you, are you present on the internet? Um. Yes, sometimes I have my own website, which I I think you've got a link to somewhere. Yeah, we shared that earlier. I'll share it again, real quick. And I and people do contact me directly. I'm a, I in fact I responded this morning to a query from somebody about a, a different subject. It wasn't traveler, but I do 
try to respond when people get in touch. Um, I tend to stay off the mailing lists and the forums because they can get quite toxic. And uh, I really haven't got time to be dealing with a lot of this um, this sort of thing. Um, but you know, contact me by way of the, the website. And if you've got something useful to say, I'll, I'll talk. Cool. And Tony, page 121, where can we find you? Uh, well, page 121, and I post up through a dozen or so different Facebook sites. Uh, I also have my own Facebook page, but I don't go on that much, so don't waste time there. Leave a comment in one of the uh, postings. I check those all all the time. On the uh, on the YouTube. On YouTube, I check the comments on YouTube, and I check the, any feedback I get on Facebook as well. Okay. And I, I try yeah. to see which way the wind is blowing be the, between the in the feedback. All right, I'm going to share again the uh, your link to your YouTube channel again. I okay. shared it at the beginning. I'm going to get it in here again. I'm all. Uh, Coming up on episode 400 at the end of this week, uh, I'll be posting my 400th video. Not bad for a little over two years on the air. So, so that's, that's content. Yeah. yeah, right about 100 hours of content. So, but all right. So all we're right. at our hour, and I'm going to give you guys your Saturdays back. So we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for giving us your time uh, today. Then it was Saturday. It's some, it's hard to coordinate. Uh, for our guests that came, thank you for the great questions and the uh, uh, the engagement with the community. This really helps us grow awareness of just Traveler and, and the love of tabletop role-playing. So these these types of events are fantastic. We appreciate your time. Tony? One other plug I have to give before we go. I'm going to be doing another jump point. Uh, I'll be running Mongoose second. Uh, I'm hoping for April, mid-April right now. I've got to set it up with Games Plus. So awesome. there will be jump point coming again. Games plus the game story. Yeah, we had I, held a jump point event there last November. It was very successful, very loud, very uh, good time. And I'm going to be doing another one. I hope in April. Well, I got a. We'll have to talk offline. My grandparents were uh, in Elk Grove Village, so I grew up in the oh. summers going to Mount Prospect. So, well, have to, I didn't realize yep. we were that uh, that connected. So that's funny. All right, everyone, and then Aaron Laroon. From the Fantasy Grounds Academy, do you have anything as we head out? No, I just want to say thank you. Okay. Well, with that, thank you, everybody. You're welcome to stick around and chat. I'll be I'll be hanging out a few minutes, but Martin and Tony, I don't want to hold you from from your commitments. So, thank you okay. so much for your time. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Martin. Nice to meet you.